Hi, <clears throat> it's Pebbles and I'm back with another video, another channeled video <clears throat> and this one, the guest that I've got with me this evening is the one and only beautiful Chris Cornell. He's here and he's relaxed and he's ready to do the video. Um, Chris has been in back and forth quite a few times this week to chat. I first connected with Chris, it was a couple of months ago, um, just before I first started doing the videos here. Um, and he's been back a few times. Didn't really care to me to ask him to do a video because that's not really what he first came in for. Um, the first time, usually when I, I channel people, they usually come in and, and you know indicate to me that that's what they're coming for to do a video. Um, and Chris didn't, so as I say, he's been back and forth a few times, so it, it just never occurred to me to ask him to do a video until I was kind of like prompted a little bit yesterday by Chris to do a video because he was wanting to do a video. And I'm very pleased to have him here to do a video with him. Um, Tonight, the person I was actually supposed to be doing was um, Patrick Swayze. There is a video put together of um, me channeling Patrick Swayze. That one hasn't gone up yet because um, Patrick was just like a complete prankster and it, you know, he was trying to make things as funny and difficult as possible and it, and it was really funny and Patrick Swayze is really great, he's very humorous and yeah, he's definitely a prankster. So um, he actually came back and apologised, which he didn't, it made for an interesting video but um, I was going to maybe edit it and put it up but he wanted to come back and do a, a fresh video so we'll include a bit of both in that but anyway, yeah, Patrick was the one that I was supposed to be doing tonight and um, but then Chris came along and um, the two of them came together and Patrick decided to let Chris um, do the video first before he did his one. So um, that's who we've got tonight. Um, I've also got Jimi Hendrix as well who I was supposed to be doing before Patrick Swayze and then he took a step back to let Patrick Swayze do his video. So everybody's been very nice and gentlemanly and considerate of each other. So tonight as I say it's Chris and um, yeah, he's got some things that he's going to share with us. Um, things that perhaps help a lot of people out there. Um, wants to talk a little bit about love, um, addictions, including drugs and alcohol. Um, so yeah, um, Chris is um, I'm sitting relaxed tonight. He's having a little bit of a glass of water. I'm gonna just show you how he shows himself to me because quite often they come in, you know, with, um, you know, they have sort of like different looks over the years, um, you know, at different times, different hair, different looks, um, clothing or styles. Um, and yeah, Chris, um, you know, has, has had a range of them too, for longer hair to shorter hair. Um, but he always comes through and shows himself pretty much in the similar or the same way to me and and, and this is here. It's um his hair is that length. Maybe just a, a slightly, slightly longer. Um and yeah. <clears throat> that so he's pretty much this how he's shown himself to me tonight. Um, Chris, um, one of the things that I said to him that, you know, I often know some of his interviews is that he, he tends to be layered up quite a lot, you know, he wears layers, I've never really seen him, you know, in a, in a t-shirt, but yeah, he usually comes wearing a white t-shirt, a cardigan, um, and quite often a, a black leather jacket over the t-shirt and the cardigan. Tonight he's actually wearing the same t-shirt as me that I've got on with his face on it. So um, it's, it's twice he's come in and he's wore that because he knows about this t-shirt but yeah he's, he's, he's worn that as well so there you go um, as I said before again they can have access to you know to clothing you know that they wish to um, so um, 
get he's, he's got that t-shirt on under his jacket and he's here and he's, re he's ready to speak and it's just such a beautiful presence a really calm presence a warm soul um yeah it's really nice to, to be in, in in this company so um i'm gonna hand it over to chris now to see what it is that he wants to say what topic he wants to discuss first and what it is he's, he's gonna say so what is it you want to talk to us about first, Chris? Tonight. Okay, so the subject he's going to talk about first is going to be love. I'm not sure what he's going to say about any of these things. We've not discussed exactly what he's going to talk about. So, you know, I'm going to be hearing it for the first time, um, just as you are. So, and then rather be known about it yeah you can hear me relay it just as chris is, is relaying it to me now so so um okay so first off he's saying you know love love is complicated often complicated love can be a very complicated business he's saying now Um, it's quite often not what you thought it was um, that can happen um, sometimes it's hard to see um, exactly what's going on in, in front of you or around you um, sometimes when you, you know, you're in a relationship um, most of the part it can be good um, but there's often trials and tribulations that come with um, good marriages even he's saying um, eventually you start to see the cracks but um, sometimes you, you just persevere and you push on because it's you know it's worth it Yeah, especially when there's children involved so yeah it takes work it takes compromises on both parts um, it takes love um, you've got to love each other and be dedicated it shows when two people come together and they both make sacrifices and compromises Um, the trouble can start when one goes off in a different direction. When one decides they don't want to play um, do the dance anymore of um, being together, being compatible, being committed. Um, Doing what it takes to make things work and that's just what he's relating to me so um yes yeah, so we're saying yeah it can be complicated but when it's good it can be very good and it can be worth it you know when you find that place that you know you feel is your soulmate All else goes out the window and that's the one thing that um, really matters and it's all you can think about um, especially at the beginning um, um, you're often willing to sacrifice everything um, to be with that person for that person to give them the, what, what it is that they want and what they need um, so yeah, there can be highs, there can be lows, there can be joy, there can be sadness, depression, bad times, difficult times, tribulations. Um, 
each party needs to be sure they want to be there decide how, how you're going to treat each other and um, that's what makes a successful relationship two people really wanting to be together and able to come together and um, respect one another care about each other love each other um, yeah, and again make sacrifices but also work together to move forward to grow with each other to be kind and nurturing to one another to respect each other's boundaries um, to give each other space when needed as well um, to let the other person have alone time if needed sometimes you just need that time out because mm, relationships take a lot and it's kind of like you need to be heading in the same direction but also there is um, a point where the two kind of become one but sometimes you do need that space where you can just be an individual because relationships get yeah, usually all about two people coming together and sometimes you can lose yourself in that a little bit when you're part of a couple you can get that lost in the um, two of coming together but sometimes there is um, um it's just gonna sometimes on occasions there's um there's times when one individual pushes more for things than the other would like so he is saying that um yeah sometimes you just need that time out to go off and to be alone just to be you just you and your thoughts um but just to um to be yourself um without anyone in, imposing on that impressing on you what it is they want and needs um particularly when you have other things to tend to um other things to provide for um and yeah other things that you have to be going out and doing such as um touring meeting deadlines um yeah doing concerts performing and all that kind of stuff the stuff that he obviously was doing so um He's saying, yeah, he's saying he's not blaming anybody, but he's just explaining it like it is. Um, some things you see go on that you don't particularly like, but sometimes your hands are tied to um, and there's limitations to what you can actually do about it. Anything else that you want to say on that or okay now he's going to talk a little bit about um drugs okay narcotics drugs and uh, drugs and alcohol bad bad combinations um, they can cloud the mind, they can cloud your judgment, they can impair your brain. Mm. Yeah, he's saying that, um, let me just, just, just get this right. Okay. 
okay saying that um yeah even people tend to think that soft drugs can um you know harm us but even um weed can alter your mind they're not as harmless things like that even they're not as harmless as people think they are yet they may have health benefits um but at what cost you know he's saying he's saying even those kinds of things can um enhance enhance um enhance your moods but not not in a good way um he's saying you know it can deaden your mind um other drugs can can, mm, can make people's lives go downhill and completely destroy lives um once 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 those habits get a hold of you it can be very difficult to get out of that um mm, yeah he's saying it's like it's like being caught in a trap and he show me um yeah like like a like a, 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 a mouse trying to get a piece of cheese going for the piece of cheese in the trap and being caught in it in the trap so yeah he's saying that so obviously you're going in to get something that you're tempted by and then it's you know slam short it's you know your stuff and of course yeah it could also be the um people's downfall um, and then you know end people's lives um destroy the lives and people the people around them um saying um okay so when i was yeah he's talking about alcohol well what do you want to say on that mm. yeah you're saying alcohol is, is the devil also it's much more widely accepted and that's the danger in that um yeah, I mean, I've, I've often noticed that. I've noticed now when I'm going into shops, more and more shops have actually, you know, obviously, you know, if, if you have a, a, an alcohol issue, the last thing you want to be having is, is that, you know, in your face all the time, but they don't make it very easy because obviously people with alcohol addiction still have to go into the shops. And then there's that aisle there that's there to tempt them. Usually the aisles are really filled to, you know to pretty much every drink under the sun um, and then what i've noticed a lot recently in the past i think year the certain shops you know you'd have to maybe walk to the alcohol aisle but i've noticed quite a lot of shops now has now moved all the alcohol to the right next to the tills so when you're paying it's right there you know in your face which you know isn't fair at all for somebody who's maybe trying to avoid um, those things and trying to do the best to come off it so they don't help at all and that's what you know, Chris is, is talking about. Mm, it's almost in France when um, you know people are encouraged to drink it at meals, even encouraged from like an early age to drink it. Um, mm, they're saying they should definitely be worn, <clears throat> worn labels on it, but it's too easily accessible it's widely accepted and people you know treat it as if it's nothing it's um yeah nowadays it's just so widely accepted that you would never think that there was any um, devastation that it could cause and it does cause you know a lot of devastation so it's beyond me saying why it's um, no, it's legalized in, in the way it is, but yeah, it's just you know you're able to just go and pitch it on the shelf like you know you go and buy your food. Um, hmm. He's saying it is actually literally is, is a poison. So yeah, what about the um, 
effects on your mind. Um, you know, obviously it's not good for the body, but you are the effects that those kind of things can cause on your mind, like spiritually, how how is it? Okay, yeah, so um, straight off his reference and um, spiritual attacks. So you're talking about Mm, he's, he's saying that he's saying entities entities can mm, mm. yeah entities and negative experience can easily penetrate the um <coughs> the energy and auric field um with um, alcohol, yeah, you can have it, you know, lots of inhibitions, you can not notice things that's going on right in front of you, so you may also, of course, you know, put yourself in situations that you wouldn't normally put yourself in when you're under the influence. Um, things can transpire right in front of you that you wouldn't necessarily notice. Um, that was the case with him. Um, certain people around you that don't have good intentions, you don't necessarily see it because um, you're in an altered state of mind. You can literally be, you know, taken down when you consume these things. Um, yeah, you say it, could just, it can cause a lot of devastation. It's just um, things that you want to accomplish. You know, you can still manage to do that, but life can become very difficult whilst trying to do that by whilst trying to be normal, whilst trying to live a life, especially performing and out on the road. Bad things can happen. Um, <clears throat> you definitely see that what a lot of things can tr transpire for others. When, when, you know, you, when you're clean and when you observe others and you see their journey and what they're going through and when they're um, dealing with those issues, which a lot of people are, like so many people are, especially in the entertainment industry, um, people apply to a drink. <clears throat> people are offered it. It's all around. <clears throat> It's like a free for all, he's saying. Um, yeah, and he's just saying that um, drugs are drug, drugs are more freely widely available. They're just you know offered. He's just showing like you know going to the toilet and people just passing it around. It's just there for the taking. So like you said, it eats up the budget, but a lot of times, um, a lot of times it's available for free. It's so it's so tem tempting. Um, sometimes you just you're just tired and you just reach reach for that pick me up to keep you going. But you know, ultimately, ultimately, it's um, <clears throat> it's not it's not going to keep you going. It slows you down, like batteries. Mm. And that many, many, many. It causes many difficulties. Yeah. So you what? What else were you going to say then? Yeah, damages, damages your organs. 
all that kind of thing has a, a very detrimental effect on the body. Um, but yeah, what else can it maybe do to your mind spiritually? And cause lack of con concentration. Um, both drugs and regularly drinking alcohol, he's saying. And when you um, he's saying it, it can also dull it, dull the imagination. I'm just ask him to ex explain that. Okay, yeah. So yeah, it means in the sense of um <clears throat> being able to create. Yeah, so it can it can dull your senses and you're not able to operate as um, creatively as you as you would would usually. You can't pursue certain things and He's saying again, you definitely don't understand. You're not as aware of what's go going on around you. Um, you're more likely to trust those who shouldn't be trusted. Um, but yeah, I think we've all experienced that when we've been out and about and then um, yeah, you just you're happy to talk to everybody, and you just kind of like in a great mood and stuff. And you know, if something was to transpire in front of you, you wouldn't necessarily, you know, get onto it or see what you know what's happening. So you know, it can be dangerous. It can be very dangerous, especially when a lot of young people are consuming all these things as well nowadays when they're out, especially. How would people um, how would people approach trying to um, go about it, trying to get off it, what is whatever it is they're addicted to? Uh, what what is it that you from, from where you are now? What is it that you understand about it? He's saying you have to go deep down inside and discover what what it is the issue is because behind everybody who has addictions there's always a story. There's always a story, whether it be abuse, marriage breakup, childhood trauma. It's always something that's not being resolved. Mm. So it's important to locate what that is and really get to the bottom of what it is that you need to heal. And he's saying that can be done in a number of ways. It can be talking to somebody Um, it can be writing down your thoughts and your feelings. Um, but you have to really, really go within and see what is the problem is, but you have to be honest, <clears throat> honest and open, not just with us, but with yourself, more importantly yourself. And there's no that's not the time for the <clears throat> for you, for your ego to come into play where you, you know which can make you often go into denial so it's something that you really do need to be honest about and look about and not be um
just not be open and honest. Be open and honest with yourself. It's just what what was it you were gonna say about that? Just not be so. Mm. Okay, yeah. You're just saying open open and honest. Don't, just not be so as as dismissive about it. Um. You definitely have to take a deep, a deep dive. You're saying a deep <clears throat> dive. Look within, within yourself. Mm, and see exactly where what what the issue is, but exactly when, when it started. And he's saying, <clears throat> and he's saying that um, that's one of the things that you have to do. Um. What do, you, what do you think about AA, AA meetings, Chris? What would would you say they are good or yeah? He's saying that he doesn't feel that they do all that's necessary. Um, it's partly helpful, but you're not gonna get the um. You're not going to get the full healing that you need with that. Um, yeah, you're saying that it's like, in a way, putting a plaster on it. Yeah, a band aid, you're saying. Um, you're covering it up, you know, you. you mm, yeah, so. Um, Yeah, he's referring to say like you know when you put a band aid on something, you know, you can you can you can stop the bleed by putting the band aid on, but there's still the wound. That's what he's saying. So yeah, that's quite true. that's a good analogy. That's quite true. Mm. The wound and the scars, you know, are still there, it's still visible and clear to see in a lot of people. The problems that they have, the way that they act, the way they behave. No judgment. But yeah, he's just saying that um, sometimes it's easy to see when people are in pain. It often goes overlooked. Some people are good at putting on an act. Um, some people choose to ignore the fact that... that um, when someone's in pain, they see the signs, but sometimes there's other things that's going on that's just more important. So it's um, often um, shoved under the carpet. And sometimes people just don't want to acknowledge that there's a problem, um, i.e. others around them or themselves. Um, and then sometimes it's too late because things spiral out of control. So he recommends that you early on as possible that you um, tackle the problem get help any way you can there is a lot of help out there <clears throat> um, what are you saying particularly particularly in this in the states he's saying particularly in the states the problem starts but there's also um, a lot more fixes as well. There is some good um, people out there and organisations that can really, really um, help in those kind of things. But again, you have to be honest with yourself, he's saying, but he's also talking about spiritual healers as well. Not necessarily um, just um yeah well just the well known um organizations yeah it's not necessarily always them he would suggest going down the more um spiritual healing type route and he's um he's also referencing um shamanic practices. Um, or going to somebody like that who you know who knows um, how to heal the body, heal the mind. Um, so, 
let me just see what else you want to say is that all you want to say on that topic i think that was really good what you have to share um is there anything else that you want to say about that Okay, so Chris is just indicating that, um, yeah, regarding his, um, his passing, but yeah, he, um, he doesn't really, he's, tonight, this evening, he's not going to go into that, um, that's not what he wanted to do the video for, he didn't want to um, speak about that, he has, um, come through to other platforms and spoke about that, there's some, um, wonderfully done videos um on um chris cornell um and i just want to say that um yeah the, the the beautifully done and um my um feel is on it that a lot of those are accurate so chris has come through tonight to um try and give some advice to others who are dealing with those issues and of course you know he did experience those issues and he um he's trying to pass on his knowledge of you know what he's become aware of now as well especially in spirit because they see things from a higher perspective they have um, more of an understanding and of course certain things he didn't understand and see when he was here that transpired and things he got himself into and the habits that he participated in um you know, obviously didn't help matters, but, um, so yeah, that's mainly what he's here for tonight is to, to give guidance to others for help and that he doesn't really want to go into any other details, but yeah, because just because, um, we're talking about drugs and alcohol and that, that in no way means that, um, we're saying that, um, what was reported in the media is correct. So, um, go and see you know what's out there and you know draw your own conclusions but his main aim tonight is to be here to offer you know guidance for others and um yeah i think that i think that was really good i definitely think going down um more of a spiritual route to find the healing for those kinds of things can be a really big help i think a lot of different things work for different people some may find that you know going to like yeah, the more publicised organisations um, are great, um, and, and some don't, but yeah, I think just sometimes it just needs to be that additional treatment that's needed to give a permanent healing of, of situations like that, so, or a more advanced healing, I'd say. Um, yeah, so how are you, how are you now, Chris, how are you doing? now and you know what help did you get you know, on the other side for those kind of issues yeah we get a lot of advanced healing um yeah he's um there's just so much of a beautiful presence and beings over there that can give you that um that kind of healing and through what, what, um, how, how, how is that done? Can you, can you let us know a little bit of how that's done? What is, is they do? Is it just like transferring through the hands or it's a hands-on healing, is it? Um, okay, just give me a minute because I'm just um, taking notes of the images that you show me, so. Um, he showed me a car wash anyway. The first one is he showed me a car wash. So he showed me like it's um, it's a process you go through. He's saying it's a process you go through. So it's like the car wash that yeah you. Yeah, you kind of like move forward, and then it's kind of like a process that you go through like the car wash. Second so heel. Um, 
you. Okay, he's saying heal the body, heal the mind, heal the soul. So yeah, we know there's no, no physical physical body, but um, okay, yeah. So yeah, sometimes it's it's kind of hard to wrap your head around like saying saying things or kind of going yeah, but I thought, oh, but yeah. Okay, what he's explaining is, yeah, even though they haven't got the physical body, there's the, um, there's the spirit body. Um, so, the, you know, the essence of what's in the physical body. So, yeah, there's still that. The essence of that leaves and there's the spirit body. So, yeah, that still needs to go through a healing process. Um, yeah, especially with trauma and shock. There needs to be yeah that that advanced healing which yeah it's often done in, in a hands-on way or just in an overall way hence the car wash analogy um there's a process to everything yeah there's healing hospitals there's healing hospitals and then um, you can spend some time there yeah, Chris actually was, I did mention it in one of the other videos, but Chris was actually one of the people who said to me that, yeah, um, in the spirit realm, the healing is, you know, and he referred to it as being like the priority, that you get the best of the best treatment, the absolute best. Um, <clears throat> but, um, yeah, he's saying that... Um, so yeah, let me just, um, what about the healing hospitals? Can you tell me a little bit about that? Okay, so you're saying overwhelming love, overwhelming treatment, treatment and healing, immense, immense love and treatment and healing. He's saying that you, you looked after and you can be there as long as as long as you need as you feel you need you need to be. Um, yeah, it should it should be like a building, and there's a, there's a red cross on it. So um, it seems to me like you know it is like a, a building of some sort. But yeah, he's also showing me like mm, and that the, not all angels have wings, some do and some some don't, but he's showing me like a light being presence just sort of like floating up by the side of the on the front of the building. Um so he's saying yeah, you're so you're surrounded in love and you're surrounded in light, you're surrounded in healing. You see, he's saying immense love. He's saying it's nothing, nothing comparable to what's on here. Um, nothing whatsoever. Mm, he's just saying, yeah, there's no, um, there's no judgment at all. Um, Nobody's going to turn around and blame you for for um, indulging in those practices, he's saying. Um, there's no shame. There's only love. Yeah, there's only the love and the healing. And he's showing me, yeah, someone putting the hands, doing like hands on, hands on healing. And it's shown me like golden, golden and um, yeah, indigo. He's saying indigo light, light. He's saying it's actually um, a 
perfect place to heal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah saying you know you don't you don't actually want want to leave. <clears throat> you can move on and advance and um, when you get stronger. Um yeah, and when you're ready to stand in your strength and your power. <clears throat> We're saying it's a, it's a beautiful place that one would um, <coughs> sorry would be forgiven for um, not wanting to leave. <coughs> but yeah, he's saying it's, it, it is a, um, a beautiful paradise, and if only the world would come to. Um, a much more place of healing if if they had anything anything that could be likened to that on air but um yeah i said that yeah yeah chris was saying that you get the best of the best i can't remember what i was going to say now before i asked him to show me those things um yeah he just speak about it being you know the best of the best to get oh that's what i was going to say yeah thank you chris yeah you get the best of the best healing up, up there but <clears throat> the healing that you get up there is it's just just let me know chris what 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 is he told me earlier it it's goes up there for the okay <clears throat> oh my gosh my voice keeps going so the healing that you get on the other side yeah is good for trauma um wounds um yeah, what else was it he said? Yeah, yeah, no, I understand that, uh, understand that but yeah, the root, what well, over there, the help that you get for, yeah, the spirit, the spirit body, the trauma, the shock, um, the wounds, any anything like that then um the healing over there is really good but um, yeah what, what chris is um, saying i think somebody else said that as well but yeah sometimes things like not earthly wounds are such that you know if it's if it's took place here um the well, things they see transpiring over here um There could maybe be um I just want I just want to exactly what's coming from Chris. Yeah, what is it about that? Okay, he's just he's just having a drink. He's he's taking some water. <coughs> Yeah, I just want to get this right, so I just want to hear it exactly from you. <clears throat> okay, so <clears throat> sometimes there's some obstacles in you know, the soul feels, perhaps. You know, seeing loved ones go through challenges or seeing things transpire that they're not particularly fond of. Um, sometimes those kinds of issues um, on the soul can be better resolved um, by, yeah, by conversing with somebody on the airplane. So those kind of things. So most of the things that you need, you can get from the other side, but sometimes there is some issues that can be dealt with, yeah, by speaking to somebody closer um, to the airplane. So there can be that exchange of healing. We can give them some that they can exchange that and also give us some as well. So yeah, 
I still think that's an interesting one. I found that quite interesting when I first heard that and I still do because yeah, I would have thought that everything could be resolved there. But it seems that there's just that little bit of stepping outside to resolve certain things um, from here. So yeah, I thought that was interesting. Um, so yeah, what else? Is there anything else that you want to say, Chris? We still, um, I, I <clears throat> wasn't really familiar who Chris was when the news came out. I'd, um, I remember <clears throat> recognising the name of the band and the only song that I kind of recall was um, Black Hole Sun. Um, yeah, he's just reminded me to say something after this. So yeah, that was the only song that I um, I did remember. I remember thinking, I remember the name of the band, but yeah, I couldn't have, have said who Chris was, or um, I probably would have been able to recognise recognise him. So yeah, I wasn't really aware of him and aware of many of the songs. So usually, when the people come through to me, they will play the songs if you know them. If you don't know them or you're not really familiar with them familiar with them where you don't really play them they don't usually play the songs so Chris in all the visits I've had from him has not played me any of his songs I've since watched a few songs but he still doesn't play them but he came through last night and yeah he's able to um, still play his guitar I mean it's he still able to do a lot of things, but you know, in, in this particular case, he has a, a, an acoustic guitar with him, and he actually played. Uh, I think it's called Torn because I love I love this, this song. I've been you know, for years. I've listened to. Um, hang on, is it? Yes, yeah, sorry, because I, I I got mixed up. Yeah, it was Creed. It was Creed's yeah greatest hits. Oh, Creed's greatest hits. Anyway. So yeah, he actually sat and, and, and played that. I wasn't sure if I'd be able to hear what he was playing, but yeah, I clearly heard that he, he sang, he played and he sang the, the song Torn by Creed. Um, so yeah, he, um, yeah, yeah, there's a guitar with him. Um, yeah, so he sang that, so yeah, as I said, he don't really, play a lot of things if you're not that familiar with the song so yeah they just know how to you know to show you that you know they're coming in yeah well they'll usually just show themselves in that case and um so yeah chris wasn't you know well i'd say anyone that I've channeled on this channel um and nobody in particular anyway have i focused on to try and get them they've all just kind of set through to me and made it known that they want me to speak to them so then you know when they do that because i can see them and then i just say to them yeah you know come in and and, and you know see what it is that they want to say what it is they want to talk about so yeah i've never really focused on um who it is or you know or trying to draw people in it just doesn't really feel right to me to do that i just kind of like it when people just make themselves known to me i haven't really felt anybody that i've wanted to um, draw it in but even if I did I'd rather just wait because but sometimes you can just even have a conversation about them and they'll be right there and they'll come straight in and go just because you've mentioned the name or you spoke to them so um yeah and a couple of them did that um and Patrick Swayze was one of them yeah he was just one of them that I just happened to say like well that'd be quite interesting to you know to speak to him and yeah, and then he popped up, and he wasn't really somebody who um, I'd been told, my guy, you just let me know, um, you know, who is coming through next. And then, yeah, he wasn't one of those people that I don't think he was like supposed to be coming through, but you know, that's what I mean. It's like, it's like sometimes they're just around or they can just hear, hear you know, your words. So, um, and Pat, 
Yeah, Patrick told me something else that was quite interesting as well. Um, earlier on, he was talking about how, I mean, I've asked before about, you know, how they sort of like know to come through to like an open channel and what it is they do. And um, Patrick Swayze, when he talks about certain things, which you'll see in the video, he tends to refer to things through through dance. So he was saying like maybe when he's supposed to come through, or let's just say somebody's like, okay, you know, are you ready to come through again, or you know, you focus on them to come through, or um, like you come to, you've just come stepped in to see me anyway. But then when we were talking about sorting out the video and stuff, I'll say, right, okay, you know, are you ready to come in? Um, so when you do that, it's like he was saying, it's like he kind of showed me the the. the the clipping ghost, sorry, the clipping days dancing where, you know, it's like look into my eyes, look into my eyes, look here and feel it, feel the dance. So he's saying like you could just feel it, you can feel that somebody's saying, oh come on, you know, ready to come through now. And so you can just move, you can, you know, transport or sort of get yourself there quickly. Um, but yeah, he was just saying it's sort of like a feeling where you, you go through um, and then you find the exit and, that, and that's how they come through. So I thought that was quite interesting. I mean, he's explaining that. But, um, yeah, do you want to, um, is there anything else that you want to say, Chris? Beautiful explanations, I think, especially about the healing on the other side. I love, I love that. I think that's really interesting. Yeah, he's saying it is, it is, and it's an interesting, very interesting process to go through. He's saying it's not always easy. Sometimes, you know, looking at things, seeing things, feeling things, but it's necessary. Um, yeah, he's just saying it, it's immense love and it's, um, it's, it's the best of the best. Mm. Is there anything else? Is there anything else that you want to say or... Okay, yeah, he's saying, um, thank you for the support from the fans. Thank you for the, all the support and the outpouring of love. Um, the adoration and for allowing his music to still live on. Um, the band's music to still live on. Um, yeah, he's saying, keep playing the music um, don't allow yourself to be under the influence of others be strong be aware be positive oh yeah because we were going to talk a little bit about um, yeah, what it is that we can do, isn't it, to prevent me to, to you know, what, what advice you've got for us to be positive, to be, you know, what is it that we need to be doing at this time? Um, okay, yeah, so, mm, they show me the climb, the fence analogy, looking over the fence analogy, seeing, you know, about what's, what's going on. Um, I think it was Brandon Lee, yeah, they gave that analogy of, there's some people who want to see what's transpired in today and some people that just don't want to see, some people are just sort of sat reading the paper while the other person's looking over the fence to see what's transpired and where some people have kind of got the hands up, they don't, they're not ready, quite ready to see yet and Chris is just saying, to not judge those people. They'll only ever be ready to see when they want to see. Um, sometimes it's a shock to the system to realize what's going on right in front of you. Um, and sometimes it's easy to just put the barriers up and not really want to face it. He's saying, 
Um, so patience is needed. Um, but he's saying, but he's saying, truth will come. Truth will come. Good times are on the horizon. He's saying, but you have to want it and you have to make it so. Um, it's not. Not everything's going to be a bed of roses. He's saying um, there will possibly be challenges for a lot of us, for many people. Um, many people getting used to the used to the changes coming in, both positive and negative changes. Um, people have to, you know, get used to that. Even those who want to get. Um, on a higher timeline and the natural ascension um, path is making me feel like there'll be things to get get used to about that as well. Things won't quite be the same as perhaps what you know we were used to, um, but it will make for the better earth. He's saying. Let me just check what, what is it you're showing me. Yeah, he's, he's showing me like somebody, um, like a, a patch of soil with, with plants on. So, um, <clears throat> cultivating own foods, he's saying. And yeah, he's showing me like, you know, growing natural foods and things like that. A lot of that should be done in most cases, he's saying. Um, yeah, show me the way it's and exchanging. Exchanging goods. <coughs> Sharing, looking out for one another. Um, yeah, what, can, what can we do to listen? So what can we do to raise our vibration? What can we do to give a positive focus mm. well for one one I mean I can even tell you like before he even said the VA is showing me like switching off the TV um, um, including the you know obviously including the news <clears throat> um, go out in nature for walks run yeah, he's saying play music, but just keep it all, just, yeah, an all time sunny disposition, he's saying. Um, laughter, things that bring you joy, positive things, positive people, positive surroundings, um, positive foods. Um, yeah, sunlight. Playfulness, exercise, what you're passionate about, what you're passionate about doing, um, whatever that may be, whether it's painting, running, horse riding, <coughs> um, yeah, just hanging out with friends, good people. Anything like that. Just keep on a good track. Keep your body and your mind set as healthy as possibly saying. Um Yeah, surround yourself with nice nice things as in not overindulging in things or overspending he's talking about by means. Yeah, just even take some time out to just sit with your favourite thing, maybe a scent nice scent or yeah you just show me you know getting comfy with a favorite blanket something as, as as simple as that a favorite piece of favorite piece of clothing yeah or a pair of shoes a jacket whatever makes you feel good you know what makes you feel good in your own skin as well um he's also referring to, to spend time with pets so yeah that's a good one because yeah he's Witness me checking on mine before and then running around 
I said, I'm just going to see through these, so I'm going to start in a minute. So, yeah, um, and they definitely bring joy and happiness as well. Um, is there anything else that you want to say, Chris, or are we going to let you have a little rest now? And... He's actually free and pretty chill, these lion back with his hands behind his head. And he seems to have his, um, now he's got a stool and he's got his feet up. Yeah, that's, I've never seen him do that before, actually, he's usually always sort of sitting upright and... But yeah, he's still, um, yeah, I looked up, uh, looked up videos of him after we spoke and he still comes across exactly the same, he always kind of looks up and thinks about what he's got to say, he speaks in, in, in a very sort of laid-back, calmly composed manner. Um, <clears throat> yeah, he's not somebody that's over-animated and you know, quite high and energetic, very calm and <clears throat> but yeah, he's, he's definitely really nice to spend time with and I think he had a lot of good things to say. I think he did, you know, you did great there. I loved what you had to say. Very direct, very to the point, but some good advice as well. Um, so yeah, is there anything else that you want to say? Yeah, good good things as well, touch on some good things that, that we can do for ourselves. Yeah, so, okay, yeah, Chris is finished with what it is that he has to say, so I'm going to head off. Um, see Chris off now, because he's very kindly coming to do this video. Um, so yeah, I will be back with another one. So my next video will most likely be Patrick Swayze. He's supposed to be up next for the other one. Unless again somebody else steps in and then Patrick steps back and they're all really nice and considerate of each other. I thought it was gonna kinda of be like a little bit of an argument earlier on when you both come through at the same time, like looking at each other like well But um yeah, Patrick I think thought he was coming in to do the video because I was focusing in to bring Chris Ray in really but um Yeah, but because um, I was going to just talk to Chris about the, the video that, to do in the week and then they both came in so yeah but Patrick was fine, he was great, he had a great sense of humour and I know when, you probably know this but when you left Chris, because Chris left first and then Patrick stayed and then he went because he was still messing around, he, was, he really messes around, I had no idea that he was going to be like that so it was kind of like surprising to me when I was doing the video, I was like is this how he is? But yeah he's got a really good sense of humour and he, he definitely messes around all the time. But yeah, he said you were great, Chris. He said he's great, isn't he? So, um, yeah, that's really nice that he said that. So yeah, you'll probably be in the next one. But for tonight, we've had the pleasure of being in Chris Cornell's company. You beautiful soul. Hope you um, enjoyed seeing the pictures as well that he come through. Um, but yeah, that, that's how he shows himself to me. Although he did have a little swap around before. Um, and what he looked like he took them through to, to validate to me that he was still there because for a minute I thought he'd, he'd gone. So um, yeah, he did do that, that's the first time I've seen him do that, so yeah, he normally does show himself with his hair, that length and curly, beautiful, beautiful hair. But yeah, okay, um, time to go and um, hope you all have a beautiful week this week and um, yeah, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share. Let me know what you think in the comments um, just come say hi, whatever it is you want. So yeah, speak to you all soon and I'll be back next time. Thank you. Bye.